What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 2 of The Ascent here with Alain Sports and Cultural Club in the world qualification pool of the World League Database. That is too much of a mouthful for an intro. I will refine that for next time. How are you guys doing? Hopefully you're good. Hopefully you're enjoying the save and hopefully, just hopefully you're enjoying and looking forward to episode 2 of this because I sure have been enjoying playing it. So anyway, uh, in terms of the sitch, as you could say, we are first in the league, one third of the way through the season. Things are looking good for us. Only one defeat. We'll come on to fixture shortly. But first and foremost, I'm going to give you guys a recap of all the transfers going on that have been happening at the club uh, since I last left you at the start of the season. So you'll notice it's the 23rd of November and uh, between the end of the transfer window uh, and now I went and I spent a lot of money to bring in three more players to really bolster the squad. I spent big with the money that I had left over and we signed some big players. So first player in was Happy Jelly. This guy, I love his name, I love his face and uh, for a right back in this league he's absolutely fantastic. 26 years old, South African international. A really solid player and a fairly decent price paid for him in the end, if you ask me. £2.5 million is not too shabby. And then uh, two more transfers to tell you guys about. Two big transfers as well. Um, big money spent. Carlos Fierro being the first. Uh, he has come in from Chivas for big money, but he's going to be playing a big role, I think, at the club here. Really good player. If you don't know who Carlos Fierro is, you've never played FM for more than two seasons because this guy dominates world football by the end of it. And the other player coming in, Will Hughes from Derby County. Big money paid uh, for both these players. Usually you can get them on a lot less on the vanilla game. The interesting thing with this database and the fact that, you know, all the leagues change. Derby are playing in a higher league. Uh, Chivas moving to, like, the second league in the world in terms of um, tiering. Um, play, they want more money for their players. So it gets a little bit confusing, uh, but that is the reason for the extra pricing paid. But as you can see here, Will Hughes, really solid centre mid. Again, another player who, if you've played FM, for more than two seasons you will have seen emerge in world football as a real superstar uh, which meant that after all our transfers uh, the total amount of money that we spent rest at 65 million pounds and so far so good we are first and it looks like that money is going to take us well on the way to promotion unless something horribly wrong goes on, goes on in the remaining games this season so anyway, let's have a look at our fixtures. I'm not going to cover the preseason, but first and foremost, we'll cover our league shenanigans and what's been going on there. Uh, in terms of this database, I am really enjoying it. Uh, I'm kind of liking the way that you play only every team once because it means I am going to be able to get through the seasons quicker. And I think it's going to be more fun. So anyway, looking at our league form, uh, we kick things off with a 1-0 win um, against Bournemouth. It was a nice way to start the season, obviously, with all the new players coming into the club. Uh, it was always going to be tricky to get gelling going well off the bat. Max Clayton grabbing the all-important goal for us. Uh, Derek Boyata getting the Man of the Match award. He was loving it. I was loving it. Uh, and all in all, a really nice start to the season because Bournemouth certainly aren't any pushovers in our league. We then followed it up with a 3-2 win against Karlsruhe. Uh, again, another really good result. These guys are, I believe, they're in Germany in the third tier normally. Um, so it was good to get a win against them. 3-2 uh, as well in the end, away from home. Uh, perhaps defensively not the most convincing performance, but Carlos Fierro uh, already repaying kind of the money we paid for him. And then Victor Klassen, uh, who of course is the Swedish guy who we picked up um, for I think it was two million pounds, getting a goal for us from centre mid. Really good to see him doing that, and a really convincing away win in the end. Unfortunately, we couldn't keep our winning run going as it came to an end with this nil-nil draw against America. Um, really unfortunate. Derek Boyata again grabbing man of the match. This guy's been really solid for us, and I did kind of sing his praises last episode as a player who you should definitely look to sign. Um, you know, no matter what league you're in, and I can further say that having seen the start of this season with him. So far in 10 league appearances, a 7.11 average rating. Been absolutely amazing for us. And at half a million pounds, he's certainly looking like a steal. So anyway, um, that made it two clean sheets out of the first uh, three league games of the season. And we actually made it three clean sheets in four with a 1-0 win against RNK Split. 
who are not a bad team by any uh, stretch of the imagination. Missed out Shell Bastos getting the penalty. A um, little bit concerning, perhaps, the fact that we created so many chances and our only goal came from a set piece and a penalty. Um, I kind of just put that down to a lack of team cohesion. It's going to be a problem that we have to kind of overcome this season. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't ideal, but you know, nevertheless, it's still looking okay for us. Anyway, we followed this up again with a clean sheet in the league. 1-0 win against St. Johnson. Michel Bastos again getting on the score sheet for us. The Brazilian international, former PSG player who has signed for Alain uh, in real life at the start of this season. Uh, coming up big for us again. So far this season, he has certainly played a role for us in off the left-hand side. Scored uh, four goals and three assists in ten games. An average rate is 7.19 as well. Uh, looking like he's going to be a very important part of our team uh, for certainly this season, if not the next few. Anyway, unfortunately for us, we couldn't keep our own beat and run going, and we did, in fact, slip up against um, Amiens SCFC, uh, losing 2-1. Asamo Jayang grabbing the goal here, um, having seen Amiens get the first goal of the game. And on the back of that, you know, we dominated the game, Dominated the kind of shooting, uh, dominated the shots on target, but we couldn't make it count as we did see ourselves slip up. So this was, this was a tough result to take, but it kind of proves, I guess, what I was slightly worried about, which is the fact that you can't really buy success in FM. Despite all the money that we have, and the, despite the fact that on paper we can sign a lot stronger club um, and kind of make up a stronger club, I suppose, of players, uh, it's going to be tricky in terms of keeping team cohesion high. Uh, I talked about last episode how I really started to build a team uh, and, you know, I wanted to add lots of strength and depth. At the moment, that is kind of troubling me in some ways because I've certainly got uh, abundance of centre-backs and an abundance of strikers, all who want to play. And rotating those players has been a challenge. So far, it hasn't proven too difficult, but it has impacted on team cohesion, the fact that I have four strikers, all who are realistically good enough to start in this league, all who expect to start, but not all who can. So that's been, a, I guess, a challenge for us anyway. So anyway, on the back of this, we then followed things up with a 2-2 draw. Well, it's not, not ideal. It was nice just to, you know, get a point on the board, I suppose, after our draw. Uh, and then following on from this, we had to play against um, Sierra, who are a Brazilian team. They are the favourites to win the league. So a good 4-1 win against them here was a fantastic result. Uh, our league prediction is actually only to finish 8th. So... Despite that, I want to finish higher, of course, but based off reputation, we're only expected to finish eighth. So to beat the team, kind of, I guess, who were the favourites to win the league was a really, really good result for us. 4-1 it finished in the end. Will Hughes, Asamo Jayan, Michel Bastos and Harry Maguire grabbing the goals for us. Uh, this was a good performance for more than one reason. And uh, the main reason was that we came from behind away from home at half time as you'll see here. We were 1-0 down and against the favourites for the league I was certainly worried for our kind of team. What we did was we changed our system a little bit, went slightly more direct um, compared to our kind of conservative 4-4-2 that we had been playing um, that revolves around keeping the ball. And as a result, we carved out four goals in the first half of the second half to make it 4-1. And we looked really, really convincing for our win and well, well worth it. So it was a great way to see the team bounce back. Um, I guess it was a good positive sign in terms of, you know, showing that our team's personality is fairly resilient and the fact that we are going to be able to make these comebacks. And uh, hopefully that's going to be something that we can um, utilise and tap into uh, throughout this season. Because there's going to be times, you know, when we go behind unexpectedly against teams. And it's definitely going to be a test of our team's personality to see if all these players who have been paid loads of money can really bounce back. And... Um, what you might not expect to FM to factor in that stuff, it really does, you know. Um, players' hidden personalities, which you can't see, and all their hidden personal attributes and um, hidden attributes, play a large role in how team players react to going behind, how they react to team talks, how they react to, you know, not necessarily starting every game. And so uh, team personality is going to be something that I really have to look at kind of working on as we go up through the leagues. I want a determined bunch. I want a loyal bunch of players who aren't going to want to leave uh, the club, you know, because we don't get promoted one season or because um, they want to play in a higher league. So anyway, it was a really good performance, this win. Will Hughes grabbing man of the match as well from centre mid, which was really good to see. Uh, and then on the back of this, we went back to winning ways, winning 3-1 against Nims Olympique. Uh, we then beat 
uh, Lees 3-1, and then we beat Elsborg 2-1, which was a big win for us because they're one of the bigger teams in this league. They only actually grabbed a consolation goal towards the end. Looking at the stats, they probably edged it in the shooting department. However, our team did perform very well, and as a result, you know, we did put up a fight, and that fight was a very good one as Jayan and Barboza went on the score sheet. Good to see Gabriel Barboza grab a goal here because he had been strag- struggling for goals in the league up until this point. Uh, but 2-1 was a great win there. So anyway, the other thing that's been going on fixture-wise throughout our kind of league campaign so far has been our cup campaign, which got off to a fire, uh, off to a flyer as we played against Sassuolo, uh, who are a, an Italian team, I want to say. We can check it here. They are indeed Italian. Yes, they are. Um, they're an Italian team. Uh, you can see they were predicted to finish fifth in their league, and they're actually playing in the World Division 11, 10 leagues above us. So to beat them 3-2, be it after extra time, was an absolutely amazing performance by the team. A Coco grabbing a hat-trick as well here, which was amazing to see. Uh, The team has played really well. This 3-1 was a fantastic way to kind of start off our competitive game campaign. Uh, We'd played a few pre-season friendlies against other teams in the UAE, none who were quite up to the standards of Sassuolo and some of the other teams in our league. And this was a real good test of character and a good testament to how good our team was. And it was also good to see some of the players who I hadn't signed, you know... um, Ekoko and Michel Bastos and Jayan, players who are already very good and at the club, um, proving their worth and proving the fact I should stick with them. You know, they're very good uh, down on paper, but to see it in the flesh rather than bringing in players who I know are tried and trusted on FM, um, you know, it was good to just see them step up to the mark. Our 4 4 2 tactic, you know, the really aggressive kind of, I guess, stance of our team and the way we were set up to play certainly was of benefit to us. And, um, it worked in our favour here, you know, we're not the favourites to beat Sassuolo, but perhaps the way we came out of the traps flying uh, really caught them out, and it also uh, kind of played testament to playing these attacking wingers that our formation relies on, and showing that they really do work as Coco grabs his second of the game there at the back post. Um, that's one thing that this tactic really works well. I'll move on to the tactic very shortly. But because we play 4-4-2 with these kind of higher-up wingers, whilst they do work back, their main objective is really to add um, an attacking presence and then be backed up you know, by the centre mids arriving slightly later and find some space in the attacking third where they can kind of craft out opportunities, drift inside, allowing the wing-backs to bomb it down the lines and get in the crosses. And they're certainly given a lot more freedom in terms of attacking. So anyway, as you can see here... Um, this was the goal that made it 3-2. Um, unfortunately, it was too little too late for them, as we did go on to win the game. Uh, I was really happy with this performance. Uh, obviously, the hat-trick was absolutely superb, and it was really good to see that uh, kicking off the season. Anyway, the second round of the Cup, we had a slightly easier game against... Um, Pomfora Dina, uh, who are... I have no idea where they are. I want to sound knowledgeable, but honestly... Uh, they're, they're Spanish, they play in the, what league do you guys play in? Uh, they play in the 16th division, they're actually bottom of it, uh, but we got a 4-3 win against them, so that was a pretty decent result, all things considering. Cheyenne grabbing a hat-trick this time, in the space of the first 44, 34 minutes. It was kind of interesting, this game, because we went 3-0 up, they pulled it back to 3-3 before, um, you know, we grabbed one goal uh, to make it 4-3, and then we were able to hang on from there, in for the win. We then won against uh, Dijon uh, FCO uh, 1-1. Uh, it finished after regular time, but we won on penalties. And then in our most recent game, we beat Citadella, uh, who are a really good Italian team, who are an g- interesting save if you're looking for a second-tier Italian team. But we beat them 4-1, which was amazing. Bastos and Jayan grabbing the goals for us. Uh, and as you can see here, there's certainly no pushovers as they do play in the 14th tier of the World League database. So that wraps up the fixtures and kind of what's been going on on that front. Uh, In terms of our tactics, as you can see here, this is how we've been lining up. Sticking with the system from before, it's a 4-4-2. Looking to see these wing-backs really open up opportunities as Michel Bastos and uh, Kembo Okoko uh, drift inside and really play attackingly. Uh, It's it's an interesting tactic, this one, but it certainly worked well for me on various saves. Will Hughes is playing the deep-line playmaker. We have Clayson playing the ball-winning midfielder. Uh, Whilst it's not necessarily his uh, best role... uh, Josimar Gomez also has a kind of chance to play there now and then and he's certainly a lot better equipped as a ball winning midfielder but both of them sharing the responsibility of that role when it calls upon them and then Barboza and Cheyenne uh, partnered up front as uh, poachers and advanced forwards.
So in terms of average rating so far, Fedotov's actually had a really good start to the season. Um, he's not played loads of games for us, but the young Ukrainian, when he has been called upon, has performed well. Uh, I want to certainly give him a lot more opportunities in the coming games. Uh, he's, he's kind of been overlooked, I suppose, just because we have got such competition in centre mid. And with the arrival of Will Hughes, it's kind of knocked him down the pecking order somewhat. But when he has been called upon, he's played well. Other players play, playing well, uh, Kembo Okoko, who you guys saw grab a hat-trick in the Cup, has been playing well. Michelle Bast as well, another player who was already at the team doing well, and then the likes of Will Hughes Derek Boyata and Jayan also helping very kind of much so in their areas the puck that they play in, and Boyata has certainly been a rock at the back for us in terms of goal scorers, Asamo Jayan leads the way with 8 goals, Michel Bastos backing him up with 6 Barboza, Gabriel Barboza grabbing 5 himself, you know he's done well in the league especially uh, when he's been called upon, uh, and so far so good for our team, I feel like we're well on course to achieve what we should be achieving, looking at how the league shaped up, there's no reason why we shouldn't be finishing top 3 in a minimum really an expectation for me is to win the league now from here uh, be interesting to see how things pan out um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see how this save goes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode as always. Uh, if you've got any, any observations, any questions that you want to ask about the save, feel free to fire them away at me in the comments. I will reply to any that warrant a reply. And other than that, guys, if you have enjoyed, smash the like button. Let me know uh, what you think of this save as a whole, and I will catch you guys in a bit. It's me, Jack, and I'm out, guys. I'll talk to you in a bit.